Okay, guys, I just want to review a little bit of uh, a mock-up, um, some of the elements that you can have on a website, uh, how some of those things um, should be laid out or can be laid out, uh, and also uh, what is possible once you bring it into uh, Squarespace to uh, actually pro to actually have a workable website. So this was a, a website um, mock-up that one of the students did uh, two years ago. Um, this is not the, uh, this was not, obviously not the uh, long form, so it's not about an article, but um, it still has a lot of elements that are important to sort of consider, to think about, um, and to implement in your website itself. So. Um, this was uh, a brand uh, that the student came up with called Spun. It's a wool and workshop. Uh, this is not the completed website. This was uh, the first uh, one of the first drafts of the mock-up, just like you're going to do. So uh, I'll take you through it, and then I'm going to uh, take you through uh, how to take something like this and actually convert it. Um, and get it ready to use in Squarespace. So the you know the reason we do the wireframe is so that we kind of understand where all of our content is going to go. Um, some of you did your wireframes um, by hand. That's okay, but it you know it's much easier just to do it using Illustrator or XD or InDesign, just because you can work. The actual size you can start dropping your text in the areas and, and you can work at 100 percent size what happens if you work by hand is you're really kind of just guessing where things are going to go but when you actually work on a wireframe you can work at 100 percent size which makes a huge difference because you start understanding pacing and uh, you can start uh, bringing in your text for instance so um, Julianne uh, did this brand spun wool and workshop um, you can sort of see it's not the it's not the you know it um, it's pretty good but I thought it's a great example because she's basically I was at the same uh, level as you guys and this was relatively the same project except they never made their sites live so she started with spun um, one of the things that you'll notice is uh, she wrote the headline, so make, gather, sustain, um, figure out uh, all the elements. So uh, you can see that she started with her, her logo. Uh, it's kind of a red ball of yarn. It's a little bit hard to see there. But, you know, one of the things that she did very nicely was she short, sort of used that first image to sort of get those brand colors across. And so this is, you know, this is part of understanding uh, a design system and, and working with a design system. So she starts with the, the red. Um, she writes the headline. Uh, she gives a, a, a monotone uh, treatment to the, the image of wool in there. And at the same time, she sets herself up for um, uh, a video um, right at the very, very beginning. So you sh it's the exact same thing that you could do on yours. And I know some of you uh, are just starting to learn um, After Effects. That, that absolutely is, is one of the best tools for creating something like this. But you can actually do something very sim. You know, you can do um, things that are lo-fi that still uh, would work very well. So, you know, if you had, uh, you know, um, you could create a, a slideshow in, in iMovie and have images fading into each other. So you could have like 20 cool images of just... Uh, wool and, and things like that that sort of cycle through here so there's lots of different ways to create these things without thinking that it has to be you know amazingly high tech so as we kind of scroll down you'll see that uh, the next sort of area she looks at is what we believe in so uh, she created these uh, these icons uh, sustainable hand-dyed cruelty free um, 
all of this is very you know obviously all of this is possible in um, Squarespace uh, everything would collapse properly with this so um, it's a nice so if you look at where she starts with you know kind of this large white area uh, some dense uh, branded color and then uh, some icons and then moving straight into sort of uh, uh, two categories so uh, winter workshop store concept so clickable areas uh, with images butted up to each other so uh, a nice kind of modern touch and then as we scroll down you can see that she's done a, a pretty good job of of creating these um, these sections so what we make uh, and then she's got the you, know, you can see the sort of uh, line work in behind there which you could do as a um, as a uh, a background as well as uh, an uh, quite a large H uh, probably an H3 here so no, that's it works really well to not necessarily have everything all your text at the same level right so here we have kind of this large uh, large oversized copy and then uh, again um, then sort of back to this um, this really dense sort of monotone and uh, with a pull quote sitting over top of it and then within that um, you know there's a within an actual pull quote over an image is a slideshow so explore the world of not so uh, you know clickable you know these these could all be images or they could be stats or they could be uh, icons and stats or they could be illustration um, this is a nice way to create um, secondary content um, very much like a sidebar um, or you know uh, really does become a sidebar in itself in this case having it uh, on this big image um, you know still works pretty nicely and then uh, obviously uh, introducing some of the uh, some of the wool and uh, um, and again if you have a look here this slideshow uh, so slideshow followed by slideshow but look at the difference here this is a very small slideshow um, meant to just be sort of icons and simple stats and then we move to this one which takes up the entire uh, width of the site and it's meant to introduce you know take up the full frame and that you know that's a really nice change of content types right so both of them are, are slideshows but um, very different you know so if you're thinking about doing something like that if you have something like a series of icons with just stats and they're all illustrated you could have this sort of play in as uh, you know this these could fade into each other so you could have an auto play which gives you a, a sense of uh, almost animation and then here uh, with the next one it's completely clickable right so you, on something like this you wouldn't necessarily want to have an auto play on here you would want people to actually um, have the control of clicking through and then uh, so we move past that and um, you know again um, another nice way of sort of uh, sort of bringing in um, uh, bringing in some of the the brand elements so some some photographs uh, social media and then again a nice background element to, of the wall in behind which is easily doable and then um, and then a form right so all of this is really doable and then finally uh, make sure that you consider um, the footer so the footer is the bottom area of the website that often will have contact information social media um, and a lot of times it'll actually have uh, a site map as well so you know if you kind of look at the the pacing here there's lots of different sort of uh, types of content lots of changes in color and, and types of uh, information but uh, all of these things sort of um, add up and, and sort of really create kind of a, a nice sort of uh, experience so you know you kind of go from uh, branded images and and um, a, uh, a video through to um, you know icons uh, images um, pull quotes um, 
breaking up the information with galleries. So all of it works pretty nicely. So those are the types of elements that, that you should be considering with yours and, and how can you sort of take this, this long form article and break up the sections. And obviously you're gonna have more areas that are text and have to be read, but that doesn't mean that um, you know you don't you can't break it up as you go down. So uh, yeah, pretty good example. And so if we were to say, okay, well, how then do you take something like this and bring it into Squarespace? So uh, fairly uh, fairly simple. So um, if you take this area here, so we'll just look at this area as a, as an example. Things that are photographic, you want to make sure that they have nothing on them, right? So if I take off the text, um, if I select the uh, select her um, her uh, gallery here, let's just see if I can grab everything. Let's make this easier on ourselves. Okay, so now what you have is um, just the background photo. You need that, right? So you can either um, create an artboard around this or a, a really simple way is to make sure that it's 100% and you've built your document big enough. I can actually... Um, I can actually take a screenshot of the area. So take a screenshot and that will that will give us that photograph. Now I'll take that from my desktop, put it into a folder, or I'll build an artboard and uh, save this as a PNG. But typically at 100%, 70 do, 72 DPI or 100 DPI is okay. So that will give me that. Um, so th that will give me an asset for that area. And then if I um, create um, if I create another artboard, so in this one, it doesn't really matter uh, how, uh, how big it is. But basically, anything with text on it, uh, I'm getting rid of, right? So we know like, for instance, if I'm going to do this as a slideshow, I'm actually going to um, make it bigger. Right, so the the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make it uh, big enough so I can determine once I bring it in how big it's going to be. All right, so uh, I'll give myself uh, I'll give myself uh, lots of space. Even if I'm going to bring it in smaller, it's better to to make it bigger and then make that determination after. So really what you would be after with something like this is creating um, enough of these, uh, you're basically creating a series of slides um, that you're going to put text over top of um, in Squarespace, right? So uh, really what you'd be doing is coming up with a, a common size. And then again, um, if this are if this is going to be purely um, uh, images uh, in in um, uh, in Squarespace, I could do it a couple different ways. Um, I could have I could do the type like this, so each one has type on it, and I would do a screenshot of this. That would be my slide one of my slideshow. Or um, if the like, let's just say these were like. Uh, you know, maybe these are like oversized numbers or, you know, that type of thing. Or, you know, maybe they're maybe they're pure, purely images. Um, the other way to do it would be to do this red area. Uh, so there's one slide. But when I bring it into Squarespace, I could actually put the text under it or I can put the text over it right in Squarespace. So that way what you do is then you take your Explorer, so you take the Explorer the World of Knots, and you could actually do that as overlay text um, or uh, captioning it underneath as you did as you brought in your slideshow. So, so if I had 10 screens, I would export 10 of them at, at full size and then bring those in. So those that's basically um, how you go about um, 
bringing in all your elements. So anything, so with this, you go, okay, well, what about this background? Again, I would be, so everything that we do in text is gonna get redone, right? So that's gonna be, that's gonna be part of, um, uh, part of um, setting up your the website in Squarespace because all of that text has to be in HTML. So the text is all easily recreatable. So if you want to have a background element like this, again, um, you can create an artboard, a separate artboard, or you can do a screenshot and export that as a PNG. So you're basically you're basically um, getting rid of all the sort of um, areas that you don't need. So anything like type, uh, type and um, play buttons, you obviously don't need that. Um, let me just go back a little bit. So then when it, so when you look at these areas, um, again, so if I'm going to do, uh, if I'm setting up icons, um, then I am creating uh, I'm looking at the size that I want those icons and um, they should be 100% so if we just kind of zoom in on um, my art artboard what I'm basically doing and I mentioned this to you before is I'm creating uh, artboards that are the same size so that basically takes up the same amount of room and it, they don't have to be touching but as you know as long as um, so if I do that even that little bit of white area above and below will will come in so if there's uh, what will the other thing that will happen is when you bring it in it will actually uh, crop it down so in Squarespace if you see my artboard it will actually bring it in until it does this right and so what happens is if one uh, goes right to the edge and one doesn't go right to the edge then they're different size icons so what you want to make sure is that you you are basically setting up um, you know with things like I with icons you're setting up artboards that are exactly the same size then you're 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 saving those as uh, JPEGs um, or sorry PNGs and you bring those in and that then that way what will happen is they will come in at 100%, um, they'll come in at 100% size, and then that's how we would actually, um, that's how we would actually be able to, if you see here, um, Julianne basically has the same amount of space beneath each one of the icons, the same amount of space up along the top, that's how it has to be done. So you can't have uh, different size icons and then resize them using um, Squarespace. They have to be the same to begin with. That way, that way, that will allow your text to all line up. Um, so that's an easy way to. That's the best way to do it. Um, and then things like text will set up in Squarespace. We're not setting it up here um, on our homepage. Uh, if if we're doing a video then uh, whether you create like a you know kind of a dissolving slideshow or you actually create a video it has to be uh, it has to be um, brought into um, brought into YouTube or Vimeo uh, and then you bring the link in so when you do that you still have control of what you would see here so you would actually bring in a custom uh, a custom um, screen um, which you can do when you bring in the video so that you have a, a nice branded element like that. Then with things like uh, the logo, it would be the same thing. I would basically be um, making another another file for my logo and same idea. I would bring that in as a, as a separate element, as a PNG, and then um, uh, we would uh, import that into Squarespace. So a lot of what basically, the, you know, what you have to think about is no matter what you do, um, once you have this ready to go, you're going, you're basically going to be stripping away uh, things like uh, things like text, right, and any sort of uh, any like uh, arrows and things like that. So you know, I would do. Uh, do a screenshot of just these sweaters then do a screenshot of the workshop and then I would bring that in um, and if um, as elements right if you're doing something like 
a slideshow so we know like for instance this is a slideshow uh, the, this text would be done separately and the these elements here of the photographs would actually be done as uh, images and then with slideshows in um, in Squarespace you just bring in bring them all in and it sets them up and then you determine how you want that slideshow to work so different types of different types of uh, galleries how you play it where the buttons go that sort of thing so uh, all of this is absolutely doable um, so this one is a little bit more uh, tricky so if you look about if you look at what's on the black screen here um, here's what you would do you would uh, you would create um, images of each one of these so all three of those photographs so um, either screenshots or artboards um, export the or export those as PNGs uh, then in Squarespace you would do your background panel as as uh, black and you would do a background image of this wool over on the side here and you don't have um, a lot of control over it but that is doable and the same thing uh, same thing would happen here um, if you wanted to do this form you would have a section that had a color uh, behind it uh, you would bring in an image um, as a background image and then you would you would um, put a form right on top of it so uh, all of this is completely doable um, it, but the, the reality is uh, once you get your uh, site completely done you're basically getting rid of the the type and exporting all the graphics all the photographs all the icons as PNGs at 100% size and then uh, bringing them back into Squarespace so that's it